So this is the RenPy to Itch video. We're going to show how to use this to take a game that's version controlled in Git and send it on over to Itch with various builds. So we've got this demo game right here on Itch with no builds. This is the same game on the back page for the editor with no builds. So we're going to add some builds to this pretty soon. Over here, this is the repo that is controlling the game that we were just looking at over here. We've got our code under version control. This is the classic RenPy, the question. Just basically version control. There's the game folder. And over here, we've got the same thing locally. So that's our setup. So what we can do is go to this repo for RenPy to itch. And you could use Git if you'd like, or you could just download the zip file. We only really need one thing from this. And let's go to this to open it. And this is the repo that we just downloaded. So all we need from this is to extract the .github folder. And so our project doesn't already have a .github folder, so this will be new for this. So we're gonna go ahead and add that to the project here by dragging and dropping it. All right, so now we've got the GitHub folder in there. And in there, it contains a workflows folder with build and deploy. So that's the main script that we need. So the software installation part of this is complete. Really pretty straightforward. Okay, I'm just gonna double check over here and make sure we've got our folder and we do. So that's part one. Part two of this, if we let's take a look at the instructions on the page here and we'll just kind of follow along. So that was uh, part one of the instructions we created our game already. It's already in version control sitting there. Part two is we created our itch.io page. I'm going to leave it to you in this brief video how to set this page up. I think you may know how to do this already. Go ahead and step through that. And the next part is to add the GitHub folder. So we just did that by adding the folder over here. And then down here, fill out the settings, secrets and variables, actions. So we're going to give this two pieces of information to let it know how to interact with our accounts. So let's go back to our GitHub repo. And this is the one for our game right here. And so in here, we can go into settings. And down on the left hand side, there's the secrets and variables for this repo. Let's click actions. So under the secrets tab, we're going to add two new secrets to make this project work correctly. First, we're going to add our butler user uh, slash game. And this is going to inform it uh, basically where to find the game. And so the instructions for that are to count, combine your username with the path to the game. And so in this case, you can see my username here is bunny gun and the path to the game is this URL slug right here. That's where I got that data from. So let's save that in part two, we're going to add one more variable, the Butler API key. And so this is a piece of information we get from itch.io that's going to allow us to use Butler. And I'll show you where to get that. So here's my account. We're going to top right hand corner, click and go to settings. And under settings, which questionably you probably should or should not show on camera, go to API keys. And over here under API keys, I'm going to generate a new one for this video, which was just created right there zero seconds ago. And if you click view, it will show you all the API key information. Very good. So once you have that, you can go back over to here and paste that in place and add your secret. So those are the two variables you need to set up to get the pipeline to work. Okay, with those set up, now we can go into the part of using this pipeline. Um, so first thing I'm gonna do is flip back to the uh, Bunny Gun repo over here, or my project repo, excuse me. And I'm gonna show you that right now we only have a main branch. So this thing works with three possible branches by default. That's going to be the develop branch, the preview branch, and the live branch. So if you push to any of those branches, it's going to push the corresponding, basically, branch name to itch as a build. And we can go over that in just a second here. So to use this, here's my repo. I'm on do, do, do. So I haven't submitted this yet. I'm going to add it. I'm going to say adding renpy to itch github action we're going to push that back up to github using our main branch and we'll just double check this is shown up in our repo 
Okay, so now this is in place. So we can use this as an action. So actions is where GitHub basically handles their continuous integration stuff. And we're gonna run an action here in just a second. So this action is gonna build our build. So over here, you do this by pushing a, a titled branch name. So git checkout dash B, uh, we'll call this one develop. Okay, we can see that we're on our develop branch. We'll make a small edit to it. And then uh, from there, we'll go ahead and push it again. Stuff, there we go. So we'll add that to the build. And we'll call it trigger CI. Oops. And uh, we'll push the build to it. So when this happens, a couple things are gonna go down. Let's go ahead and take a look at our actions tab now. Since we pushed to that branch, it's taken our code and it started to run one of these triggers here. And so this trigger is gonna be the part that does the magic of taking the code, building the, the different versions of it and sending it to your itch.io account. This is a part where if you are not interested, you could certainly fast forward this part where the CI runs. This is gonna take just a moment, but I'll just kind of pick through it to give you some context as to what's happening. So it's not like, you know, completely mysterious. Um, so, yep, building and uh, it's gonna essentially, let's look at the pipeline process while this is happening here. This is the one file that ends up being like the driver's file for you. Um, it's this file here. And so this is what's executing right now. This is the action file. So this might be TMI, but we'll just touch on this briefly. Um, do, 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 do. You can see here, these are the branches it's gonna react to. So since it was on the develop branch, it reacted to that branch or preview or live. You could change these, name them to whatever you'd like. This is still gonna work. And uh, then it goes through and basically <laughs> builds the project a few times down here. If you didn't want a certain build to happen, you could comment out, we'll say like Windows or Linux or Mac. Um, or you could even comment out the web build, which might be appropriate or inappropriate for some games by putting the pound symbol in front of it. This is where you can edit these things. Anyway, the whole CI will run, execute the build process. I'll just scroll to the bottom of this real quick so we can see a couple of highlights. This shows down here where it's pushing the development build for Windows, Linux, uh, web is over here. So each of these builds come out down here. This looks good. It didn't turn red. This is green checked. It means that's looking good. So then let's pop back over to itch. And so now we're on the page where um, our demo game is, which we just pushed our builds to. So let's reload this. And down here, we've got our web build, our Windows build, our Linux build, our Mac build. And so this is looking real good so far. Now, if you want your game, let me just show you the front page here. By default, this game has a web build, but it's not configured in itch.io to show that build yet. So if we want to enable that build, we just have to click a couple things down here under classification. Oops, sorry. Actually, it's kind of projects. Go ahead and click HTML. That's going to make it so it loads in the browser. And then go to your, your web copy. It's got the name web in it. And then click this file be played in the browser. And then the final thing I'd recommend is down at the bottom, you can click this button here that says full screen button. So this gives the user the ability to make it like a lot larger. So let's save this and take a look at what we have. If we refresh this, you can see loading game for the first time. That loaded pretty quick. We'll click run. And you can see now it's booting up RunPy. Uh, HTML. Um, this is a progressive web app. This was just recently rewritten. Very cool stuff. Works well on a lot of browsers. This is Brave Browser and it loads nicely. And so the game picks up from here. So the same flow, of course, can then happen again too. If uh, you wanted to go ahead and update your game, it's the same kind of process. You could update on any branch you like, and then as soon as you merge back into the development branch again, it'll begin the deploy process to send those builds out to itch. Let's go ahead and revoke that before I forget. Very good. All right. So that's the high level workflow of this. Um, I've touched on the basic parts of this. This does work if you just have a brand new repo, of course. 
um, the directory structure of my uh, repo structures for these things. Pretty straightforward, but we'll just double check. So this is the directory that contains the game's game folder, like the base directory for your game, essentially, on all the different RenPy games. So just make sure that's where your, if your version control is not set up like this, keep that in mind. This is what it expects. Um, but it should be. It's pretty much the default. So here's my, the question folder. And then inside the question folder, we've got the game folder. Just to be super clear about the directory structure there, it is the default. So if you've got that, you version control that folder. Um, this repo also contains a git ignore, which you could use if you don't have one running. You don't have to use it, but uh, it's kind of helpful to knock out certain files. If we look back at this repo over here. Oops. Let's do point again. Let's see here if I can find my own repo in my own account. <laughs> okay, here we go. So anyway, point again. Renpy to itch. Sorry for that delay there. Here's the git ignore file. So I've included this. This is the one I'm using. Um, it works really well to keep a bunch of cruft out. You could copy that into your folder too if you don't have a git ignore on a new project or upgrade one that's not doing its job as much as you would like it to or whatever. So that's optionally there. The other file is the license and the readme. So it's really just all about that workflow file. This is the uh, main controls for it. And if you're um, looking to craft your own version of this, by all means, you can mess with what branch. And then if you wanted to make anything not run, you can come down in the code here and try to find where it pushes these builds. The other option too, which might even be easier for you, is you can always go over here in the page with the build are and where the build is and click hide this file and prevent it from being downloaded. It may still build it, but that might just be easier as, as opposed to editing code. But if you're comfortable with editing some of this code, you can come in here and play with these files. Okay, so that's the gist of how this works. Um, I'll probably do some more on this uh, as as we start to clean this up and get some feedback on it, but that's the majority of it for now. Uh, any questions, I guess open an issue in the GitLab repo, and I'll take a look and see if I can help you out with that. All right, enjoy. I, I know we're souped about using this over here. I'm glad HTML5 uh, output is back, and so hopefully this helps uh, the community essentially cut out some of the build time stuff so you can go... Really, it's about the collaborative process with this thing because we have um, I, myself and Bose, for example, will be coding and we're pushing stuff in from two different computers in two different locations sometimes. And so this helps a lot so we can merge our code and then push to one branch and then everybody on the team can see something live, like, you know, immediately as opposed to having to wait around for Nate to build it or something, <laughs> which happens more than you'd imagine. <clears throat> okay, so, yeah. Okay, thanks a lot. Bye. <laughs>